Hi, I'm Rob, and you're watching Channel 48. each one a fine family man. Remember uh, Lawrence Welk, if you uh, laugh at tonight's jokes, I have candy to throw to you. So a lot of new people here tonight, so if you laugh at the jokes, I will throw you candy. You see, here we go. This is live, uh, what is this, uh, Scott? February what? February 3rd? 12th. 12th, 19, what is this, 90? This is 94. 94, here we go. This will be joke number one. You know, Wednesday was Groundhog Day, and uh, the groundhog came up and instead of predicting whether or not there was going to be six more weeks of winter or not, he, he disclosed that, the groundhog disclosed that once he was actually molested by Michael Jackson. And so, the, uh, instead of... <laughs> See, the groundhog wants in on some of that $10 million. Hey, that was good. Do that again. All right, we're going to throw candy. This is where we throw candy. Are you ready? Now, be careful. There are sticks in here. We may put an eye out. There are no youngsters in the audience, right? We're going to go to the right. Ah, I tricked everybody. Did you see that? I tricked everybody. Oh, a lot of you probably didn't hear this, but about, just about 10 minutes ago, I heard it uh, on the, on the uh, monitor inside the uh, control room. Tanya Harding was officially arrested tonight. I don't know if you finally uh, heard that. Yep. What a shock. Well, but. But the good news was that she is still able to, uh, to skate in the Olympics. Uh, Tanya said that she's really happy that can, she can still, and he, still uh, skate in the Olympics, but it's going to be hard to uh, do those triple lutzes with those handcuffs on. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> triple lutz. What is a triple lutz anyway, Scott? You and I were doing a triple lutz the other night, weren't we? Yeah. yeah. And on the show tonight, we have beer expert Jim Kuby. We're going to be drinking beer here tonight. Oh, they've already started to not paying attention, and they're talking over there. Hey, mind your own business. Ah, okay. Uh, and uh, let's see, who else do we have? Oh, we have, uh, for, uh, for people who live here in Evanston, the owner of, uh, and I guess he's the owner. Is he the owner? Do you know? The owner of Dave's Italian Kitchen, Dave Glatt. <laughs> All right, boys. Walking to the desk music, please, and let's get the show going. Walking to the desk music. Here we go. Now we can walk to the desk. You know, we're making money here finally, Scott. Did you know that? We're selling this new item. No. Did my voice get higher? <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> Cheryl, show that little item that we're selling uh, uh, during and after and before each show from now on. Show that little item that we have here on sale. Here it is. You can buy this outside. Hey, baby, nice legs. <laughs> How do you get those 
great looking legs. Well, you know, some people are just born with good looking legs. But now, with Legmaster, you can develop good looking legs. And it's fast and easy. I work out with Legmaster five times a day. Five times a day? Five times a day. It's fast and it's easy and it's fun for the whole family. And you can use it anywhere, right? Anywhere, on the phone, in your kitchen, in your, in your work area, anywhere. Well, let's have a look. Okay. What do you mean the Hubble's have editing time on Wednesday? <laughs> Who's in an inversion on Thursday? What about Tuesday? We're back after that. So you can just buy that. Isn't that nice, Scott? Yes, it is, Rob. Are we ready for the Wheel of Destiny? Yes, we are. Ladies and gentlemen, get your numbers out for the Wheel of Destiny. Here we go. Is that the Wheel of Destiny music? I like the music. All right, here we go. Everybody got their numbers ready. We're going to spin the wheel. Here we go. Spinning the Wheel of Destiny. We got the battle ready. Number. Number, 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 hello, that's me, 16, number 16, come on up. Hey, here we go, number 16, you stand down there. <laughs> I'm really, how tall are you? Five to seven. Okay, good. The Wheel of Destiny winner, your name please? Joel Berman. Here you go, Joel. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to blindfold you. Oh, oh, now wait a second. Did you try to hit me, Joel? No, I just... Oh, boy. Joel may be trouble. Here's what we're going to do, Joel. Have you ever seen like a pinata type of thing? You know, you get blindfolded and, and, uh, and you hit the thing and, and candy comes out, that kind of thing? Kind of like a talk show host. Kind of like a talk show. Okay, Joel, here we go. Joel's trouble. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Joel has pissed me off, so I don't know. Oh, I'm just joking. Here we go. Bring her out. Here's what we're going to do, Joel. We're going to blindfold you, and then we're going to uh, have you take a couple of whacks at something. Bring it out. All right, Joel. OK, now what we have here, Joel, watch him hit the microphones. Here, what we have, Joel, is the Nancy Kerrigan pinata. And what she's doing, she, it's a little doll, and she's holding uh, some flowers. And if you hit her in the legs and knock the flowers off her arms, uh, you win two bucks, OK? So we're going to spin you around a little bit, Joel. Gonna spin you. Can you see, Joel? What? Okay, th this will be fun to look at later on, huh? All right, here we go. All right, do we have, do we have uh, hitting music? All right, go ahead. Go ahead and start whacking away, Joel. Oh, no, oh, she's, wait. Didn't knock, didn't knock the flowers off, Joel. Oh, God. One more time. This is a lot of fun, huh? OK, one more time, Joel. Go! Oh, hell yeah! All right, Joel. Congratulations. And Joel, two bucks. There you go. Thank you for playing our game. Thank you for allowing me to play okay, your game. OK, thank you. OK, Joel, ladies and gentlemen. Are you ready for the first break? Sure. Break. Break. First One. break, please. And then we'll come back with beer expert Jim Kuby.
That was uh, Scott Lamberty and Tom Stahl. And once again, ladies and gentlemen, we have another tall band on tonight. It, I, I'll, I, do I just get shorter every week? Look at you. I know. You know, uh, you know that Hubble telescope? The Jack Hubble telescope? The Jack Hubble telescope. The Hubble telescope, you know, was refurbished. When was that, Scott, that Hubble telescope? It was a few weeks ago, wasn't it? Yeah, and I guess they got some, they're, they're, they're not really sure about whether or not they fixed it correctly. However, I hear tonight we have a special feed from the refurbished Hubble telescope. Is, Did you is, know that? This is the first glimpse. This is the first glimpse. This is live from Hubble. NASA. Okay. Right straight from NASA. This is live. Mm -hmm. Very exciting. Can we see it? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> yes. Let's see it. Cheryl, let's hook into that live. Oh, my god. Hey, that's not fixed at all. It doesn't look good, Rob. What? It doesn't look good. No. I guess they're still having problems with it. Look. Here it comes. Uh-oh, wait. What's that? Lord in the eyes, oh. and I've seen the glory and the power of uh -oh. our death. And I said to my friend, Chuck, Chuck, you oh, the Lord in the face, in the, in the eye. And he said, Reverend Smith, the Lord looked at me when oh, boy. He said, Chuck, get your hand off me! Oh, hey, me. Well, praise the Lord! Oh boy. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. Well. So they got a few kinks to work well, on. Well, it looks like they, they didn't quite fix it perfectly. So is that really bad taste, that Tanya, uh, Nancy Kerrigan thing? Oh. I told some of the teachers about that at school, and they looked at me like I just like strangled their pets. You know what I mean? <laughs> they looked at me with, with, with like, oh my god, that's horrible. So what if it's in bad well, taste? Well, yeah, so what? Exactly. Think like of all the bad taste things. You, hey, you know, I was in Farmore. You know, Telly Savalas is dead? What? In Farmore? He died, right? Something like he died in Farmore. No, Telly Savalas. Does anybody know this? Telly Savalas is dead? Yeah. What'd he die? Really? Yeah. What'd he die of? He choked on a lollipop. He choked on a lollipop. Okay, I gotta fix this again. You know, if you, uh, oh boy. You know, we gotta get, we have trouble with the Wheel of Destiny and this, and this thing. You know, if you enjoy drinking beer, our first guest is going to, uh, uh, give us beer to drink. How's that sound? Sure. Good. Please welcome. Please welcome beer expert Jim Kuby. Jim, get in here, Jim. Hi, Jim. I'm having trouble with the stool. Hi. Nice to see you. Nice yeah. to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Hey, I'm actually taller than you, Jim. <laughs> well, kind of. Close enough. Close enough. I'm sorry. I, I, rare. It's such a rare uh, happening for me that I, I, I'm sorry if I offended you. No, you haven't offended me at all. Okay. Let me have a lavalier. Here. here, put this on. <laughs> I'm stepping on it. Okay. Jim, you do something called the, the beer show or something, right? Yeah. You do this live in bars. How did you... Uh, well, I, I read the, the thing that you sent me, and so I, I, I guess I've based my questions upon what I've read here. How did you get interested in, in uh, this, this beer tasting yeah. business? Well, yes. Okay. Now, along about seven years ago, uh -huh. uh, we started the beer show TV version right here at ECTV. Right here in the studio. And you know, I used to watch your show. I know you did about, what, ten shows you uh, said? Actually, we did six that were here, six. and... Uh, one up at another cable outlet in the northwest suburbs, uh -huh. which we don't want to talk about. It was Why horrible. not? Well, it, and I think we want to talk about No, it. I don't think we want to talk about that right now. No, okay. no, right. no, well, Rob, we no. We okay. won't talk about that. We won't talk it was about a disaster. It. Really? It was a total disaster. Kind of like uh, the show, huh? No, we're No, we're your show is here. fine. It, your, your stool's a disaster. But. I, well, you know, I, I've had, well, that's why I was wondering about that checkup, but that's a whole different story. Uh -huh. now. Now you said you've, you've, you've sampled, so you, so you actually went to a liquor store at some point, picked up some odd brand of beer. Well, just all right, the, the last episode we did here at ECTV uh -huh. in August of 86, I think, uh, we, uh, we didn't know it was going to be the last one, and, uh -huh. but uh, it was. Yeah. Uh, we uh, uh, tried uh, to <laughs> liven up the show. We had done many things, home brewing, we'd uh -huh. gone to different breweries, we were looking for something. And, right. uh, Paul Rosen, who was the uh, producer at the time, uh, yeah. 
came up with the idea, well, why don't we find some old beers and taste mm -hmm. them? Okay. Since we used to do tastings yeah. on the air, on the show. So uh, we found some old beers around at a liquor store that, that had, like, for can collectors. Mm -hmm. And uh, boy, the guy didn't want to sell it to us when we told him what we wanted to do with it. He was like, yeah. you're not going to drink that, are you? Yeah. I'm not going to sell it to you if you're going to drink them. Oh, it's okay, sir. We're professionals. So we... Uh, we did buy it, and we did do it on the air. Wait, and it he was didn't want to sell them to me to you if you were no. going to drink them. Yes, because what are uh, you supposed to do with it? Well, after beer. after a few years in a bottle or a can, most beers are uh, not supposed to be consumed. It's dangerous, potentially. Boy, you know, I've never had any beer that I brought into my apartment that wasn't consumed. Neither have I. Yeah, really. Well, what'd you bring? So you All said right. you sampled over 300 brands of beer. Uh, that, well, it's actually over a thousand now. It's over a thousand. Yeah, now, it shows too. Now, when you sample, what's the difference between just sitting down and drinking a bunch of beer and sampling beer? Well, uh, you're not drinking to get drunk, for one. Oh. Although that is a natural outcome if you sample too many. Yeah. Well, how many can you sample before you start feeling the effects? Uh, well, it depends on what you're drinking. If uh -huh. you're drinking something like a, uh, an English barley wine, for example, uh, it could be two. Really? Two about that size. If really? you're drinking uh, yeah. something, a typical light beer from. Uh, um, any large brewery, uh, mm -hmm. you could probably drink, uh, I don't know, a, a bucket load, okay. probably like this, before you'd feel it, at least me, anyway. Yeah. Well, okay, well, are we going to so, actually yeah, taste it? Yeah, we're going to, uh, we're going to taste a, a fine, this here is this an is actual, beer. this is a good beer. Note the, uh, note the corked bottle, uh -huh. a la champagne. Is that going to, is that going to explode? Is uh, that going to pop out of here? No, it is going to pop. Oh. Uh, I'm trying to make sure I don't hit the light. Oh, well, yeah, make sure, yeah, okay, go ahead. <laughs> All right. This is a uh, Belgian specialty. A Belgian specialty. This is uh, from the uh, Van Hosbroek uh, Brewery. The uh, Van Hosbroek, huh? Yeah. No, I'm sorry. The brewery boom. Okay. Uh, there's so many. They have 400 in that country. How many? Uh, how many? How many different kinds Are you of worried beer? About this? Yes, I am worried about it. Okay. I, I had an eye problem all once right. a long time all ago. All right. All right. All right. No problem. Okay. Here we go. This is. Oh, ah. Shit. Is that it? <laughs> all right. And uh, uh, we also have a, uh, a bottle here. That was of, it? We wanted it to go boom. No, I did too, but it okay. didn't do this. All right. All right. Anyway, let me explain here. All right, here we go. Now, you, uh, you base your show, you go to bars, right? You go yeah, to bars and we, actually do a live beer tasting we show. We do live beer tastings, uh -huh. yes. And we do have little tester cups here oh, for people who do want to come up and sample uh, okay. these two products. And they could actually so do dares. a little urine sample, too, if they wanted to. If you wanted to. If you have a drug test you have to take or something later on, yeah, yes. sure, you can do that. All right, well, let's taste All the right. beer. I okay. love beer. This is a Belgian beer, uh, uh -huh. and this is a American beer. Mm -hmm. uh, this was brewed probably about 1990. Uh -huh. uh, this is uh, a lambic beer. Uh, it's a Faro type lambic beer, brewed from wild yeast, not from a culture yeast. Wild yeast. yeast. Yes. As uh, opposed to tame yeast. Uh, right. Exactly. The difference, like between a tame cow and say a wild cow. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh -huh. Sure. <laughs> Let's go with it. Sure. A All tame right. cow. What would, would, uh, what would, would a wild like cow do? <laughs> go ahead. I, I think, you know, I'm from Indiana, and we used to go out looking, looking for wild cows. <laughs> I bet we you found one or oh, two. Oh, if we were lucky. Right? <laughs> if we were real lucky. All right. Uh, all Wait right. a second. Now, now. All right. All right. Now, what you're looking for is a bouquet. Pardon me? Bouquet. Bouquet. Okay. Bouquet and aroma, okay? Oh, okay. You notice that you're getting uh, strong estery kind of smells, uh, fruity. Oh no, that was me. I had a, I had two cheeseburgers right before the. <laughs> that was me. I let one fly about 30 seconds ago. Okay. Right. Oh, you had, oh, I just saw it drip off your nose. Oh, no. Okay, so now when do we get drink it? All right. Well, uh, you're going to swirl it to get a little bit of it. This is actually served a bit too cold, but then again, we're in America and everything's too cold. Here. It's tough for to swirl this. Well, all right then. I'm, okay. I now apologize. When do we drink? Okay. Now. I should have brought you a larger cup. Okay, so I got the bouquet, bouquet, right. and I'm swirling. Now, just and drink a little bit. What about Jim Kuby? What about the beer tasting? We can't show that. Oh, we can't show the beer tasting. Well, that's too bad. That was really uh, very, there were some very funny moments. Funny it moments. Ruby. All right. Okay, stay right there. Sit down. Our, uh, our friend Scott over here has many talents, as we already have seen. <laughs> we already have seen here tonight. <laughs> <coughs> Cheryl, show Scott that, uh, show us that talent. I'm drunk. I'm faced. Show us, uh, here we go. This is uh, one of Scott's talents. <coughs> Sorry, thank you, Jim. So what are you doing here, Sky? Uh, opening up the receptacle. Uh-huh. What's that, water? That's water.
Oh, wow. So what that would be is you stick your finger in some water into an electric outlet and bam. That's it. Wow. Amazing. You try it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. After a couple of these piss beers, I might. <laughs> Jim Kuby, thank you very much. Now, 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 ladies and gentlemen, here, you've all come here to see the band. Please welcome the Richard Black Project. It's midnight. Passion in your mind. You're doing all right. So love you got to find. Nice voice. Oh. I used to have a voice like that. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> here, come sit down here, Richard. It was, uh, it was right after that operation I had to make me shorter. Hey, uh, tuck, tuck. Well, the, it was uh, the doctor said well, it was an experimental type of thing, and I ended up with this voice. Okay. <laughs> Richard Black Project. Right. Wow, how'd you come up with the name? What, is the, what does that mean? I not think of a better name. It was that simple. Really? <laughs> no, really, when we put the band together, it was basically Paul, the uh, lead guitarist, and I. There was no band. And uh, we started marketing records, got a market, uh, achieved a market for mm -hmm. uh, developed a market in the UK and mm -hmm. Europe for the records, and then decided we'd better put a band together in case somebody wanted to see us. Mm -hmm. And therefore, the Richard Black Project, because uh -huh. up to that point in time, since we didn't know who we'd be working with, we figured I'd always be there, mm -hmm. so Richard Black. And so, say no. that I started with Street Corner Doo Wop. Um, well, why would you hate to say that? That's there's because no it starts there. dating us again. Uh, well, I started with Doo Wop back in the uh, in the '60s uh, when it when it was going out. Mm -hmm. I grew up in uh, a very urban central, you know, uh -huh. uh, downtown Chicago type situation right. when that where that was the most common thing because nobody. I mean, 
I was about 13 or 14 mm -hmm. uh, when I met uh, you know, Scott's brother, basically. You know before Scott's I, brother? I knew, yeah, before mm -hmm. I met people that had their own instruments. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, you know, we started vocalizing yeah. then. So, so uh, 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 now do you write your own songs? Did I ask you that question? Yeah, we, we, the, pretty much the band does that. Yeah, yeah. We, uh, we, we write together uh, a lot of, uh, someone will bring in an idea and then we'll all expound on it and put it together. Uh -huh. uh, Paul does a lot of the, uh, Paul Petratus, the lead player, uh -huh. uh, does a lot of the uh, arranging. Uh, Paul's, Paul likes my music, but uh -huh. thinks I stink at arranging, uh -huh. so uh, he embellishes things. What Our styles are so do? different, Our styles are so different yeah. that the mix works. What mm -hmm. he does, uh, basically his input will change completely what I did, probably like what Lennon and McCartney did. I mm -hmm. mean, they were diametric diametrically opposed music. Right, yeah, so. John Lennon had all the hard stuff and Paul had all the wuss stuff. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. So. Now, how, how, now, now when you sit down, do you sit down to write a song? How do, how do you go about uh, What's the writing process for you? I'll get some beer, really? a lot of cigarettes. Beer and cigarettes. Late at night. Late at night. And uh, come up with, the first thing I do is come up with a concept, like uh -huh. what's it going to be about? Uh -huh. And then work from there. Yeah. The con concept will invoke a, a mood, and music's mm -hmm. simple. It's simple math, you mm -hmm. know. It's very simple. Yeah. Uh, it's either going to be a major or minor key, yeah. minor dark and gloomy, yeah. and major happy, yeah. and uh, take it from there. Right. Just work. Yeah. What do you think of rap music? How, how do you how do you view rap music? I produce a lot of it. Yeah. I think it's a lucrative thing. Mm -hmm. um, I think it has value mm -hmm. uh, to a point in that people are getting to express themselves. Mm -hmm. I think it will develop eventually some very good poets. But I don't think, I think saying rap and music in the same uh, phrase uh, is absolutely, they, they absolutely yeah. contradict each other. Yeah. I don't think there's much music in rap. Yeah. Who's the most famous person you've ever worked with? Who, who, you've worked with some pretty famous people, right? Probably, they all kind of, uh, there was a period where all the people I worked with were pretty much on the same level. Uh -huh. The ones that made it the farthest were probably the drifters because they were uh, inducted in the American uh, mm -hmm. Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Which is going up in Cleveland. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. I was um, in Cleveland last weekend and I saw where it's going up. It's right on the lake, right on oh, Lake Erie. Should be nice. Yeah, it should be great. Yeah, But they're, they're pretty much all the same. Martha from Martha and the Vandellas. And Want some more beer? Here, give yeah, me your beer. Oh, we'll do this quick. Um, they're all on the, pretty much on the same level. They're people right. from the area, era. The, the most personable, the, the most dynamic musician I ever worked with was Del Shannon. Del by Shannon. Fa by far, really? absolutely. <laughs> Get some ready for reading. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, we have, we have, believe it or not, we have some scenes from Jurassic Park that were cut out of the original movie because they were so graphic and so horrible. Oh, can we see them? We can see them I'd right now. I'd love to. Cheryl, show those scenes of Jurassic Park that were just too horrible for the children to see. <laughs> Be scenes from Jurassic Park that were just okay. I'm scared. Well, I'm too. Now, you guys are going to play again. Good. Are you right? Now, what, yes. what are we going to hear? What song are we going to uh, hear? In the Mood. It's uh, the mood. second or third cut on the Okay, now, can you still perform after drinking all this beer? Uh, probably much better. <laughs> all right. Well, one more time, the Richard Black Project. Thank you.
Thank you. Nice job. Nice job. Richard, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Look, boy, there's a bird in this man. Oh, yeah. Virtual reality. If you ever, yeah, you don't need to go after watching this. Cheryl, here it is. Virtual reality. So you got the helmet, you put on the gloves. Well, it looks like something there, huh? I hear it's an expensive technology. Is it really? Yeah. Look at that shot. We're just coming back. That's the Richard Black Project equipment. Very nice. No. <laughs> That's me. You look pale, Rob. Do I look pale? Yeah. I, you know, I'm telling you, I look diseased. We're running out of time. Oh. Sorry. No more. Well, are we really? What time is it? 9.20 something. This is perfect timing. Really? Perfect. Okay. You know, if you live in Evanston or anywhere in this North Shore area, you know that we have one of the best restaurants in, in the whole area, right? Please welcome from Dave's Italian Kitchen, Dave Glass. Hi, Dave. Good. How are you? Here, put that on. You have to put that on. How was business tonight? Real good, actually. Really? Yeah. Figure this out. So how long have you been here? I mean, you weren't. Um, this is our 22nd year. Sorry. No, I mean, how long have you been here in the okay, studio? Half hour. I was going to do that. Too, <laughs> <laughs> how long have you been dancing? <laughs> I'm sorry. No, no, Would no. you like some beer? Okay. Really? Sure. Oh. Is it bad? Perhaps, or something? No. Oh no, this is the good beer. Okay. <laughs> you, you sell beer over there, at Dave. Yes. How long has Dave's been there? You answered the question already, but. Well, I, actually, this is our third location where we're at now. Is it really? Yes. Yes. We were on Davis Street for actually in two locations for a total of six years. You're kidding me. Huh? Did you know that? What? <laughs> that this is not their first, their, their only location? They've moved twice? Yes. Well, I, I, I know you were on Davis Street. Yes, yes. There was a very small, um, very small storefront, maybe a thousand square feet. Yeah? We were there for about three and a half years. Yeah. Really? Uh -huh. When did you move from that location? That was. It's getting hard to remember. Yeah, um, it was before the, like the late 70s. November 75 was when we moved. Oh, see, that was before I moved into okay. town. That's we, why I'm so dumbfounded. Well, actually, the building is no longer there. It has nothing to do with right. the beer, really? The building's gone. Okay. Right. What's the current status of, of Dave's these days? How, I mean, I know the research park had right. a little bit of, there was a little bit of problems there, wasn't there? Well, uh, here, have your beer. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. For a long time, they've, um, <laughs> this is okay. It's fine. Gardener to come in. He drank it. <laughs> I'm Ooh. just joking. No, okay. no, it's good. This is right. good beer. Okay. okay. Um, you know, there, there's actually nothing new with that. Um, for a long time, we've been told uh -huh. that we were supposed to be out of there. Um, I think the first time I was aware of anything would have been the fall of 81. Mm -hmm. And I remember this because it was just when we started serving liquor. Mm -hmm. And I was taken to a city council meeting, uh -huh. and they had this big three-dimensional mock-up of what Evanston or downtown Evanston right. would look like in 1985, uh -huh. 1990, and 1995. Right. Doesn't look like that. Really? No. No. Well, that's good. Because, right? Yeah. Well, they were going to have a couple hotels and an airport. An airport? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> more beer days? No, no. No, <laughs> um, no, no. But they, they were going to have two more hotels than they do now. Uh -huh. really? And, yes, and some other large things, too. Yeah, we both just touched our nose. Right, the same now, now, how long, uh, um, uh, how do you get started in the restaurant? Now, it's one of the, it's a very hard business right. to, to, to be successful in, right? Right. Well, uh, well, you're successful, right? Medium. Yeah, well, how do you do it? What, what's the secret of, of running a, su a successful restaurant? <sighs> I'm not sure. 
<laughs> well, I, I mean, maybe that's good. Maybe that's good that you don't know because well, whatever uh, you've been doing is it's right, and it's good not to tinker with it. You know, well, if no, it works, don't uh, fix well, it. Well, I mean, all, all the things that you'd want to do would be common sense, yeah. I would think. Yeah. What do you run into? What's like a problem in the restaurant business that you would run into that the person who doesn't run a restaurant wouldn't know about? Like a daily problem that you deal with that that we wouldn't have any idea of. Probably lack of sleep. Lack of sleep. Yes. Well, no, I know all about lack of <laughs> <Okay>. sleep. <laughs> well, I was thinking everybody else. Everybody's so busy noted. Yeah. No, um, there's no one problem with, that no, is no. that difficult. Right. It is a combination of many little things. Mm -hmm. um, it's funny because I, I, I guess I've trained myself not to think anything is difficult. Right. So it, because if you think that something is difficult, it, it certainly will be. Right. So. It's kind of like sex, right? Well, <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry. How many? I kind of want to get over that yeah. at this age. Okay. How many? How, how many garlics do you go through in one year over garlics? there at Daisy no, Town no. Kitchen? God, I don't know. Garlic. Um, garlics. Probably in pounds. It's it's a lot of poundage. Really? I, I'm sure it's over a ton of garlic. A ton of garlic. Yes, yes. Wow. Wow. It wow. may it may even be over that. What's what's in your in your mind? What's the <laughs> It's hard to say because I like different things, different mm -hmm. days. Mm -hmm. Oh, shit. We're back two weeks from tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dave. Thank you.